Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, July 3rd, 2013. We begin with news from the world of nanotechnology as it applies to medicine. Scientists from Vanderbilt University have developed a new vaccine using nanotechnology that has far-reaching implications. Their target for the vaccine was respiratory sinicidal virus, which is the number one cause of viral infections of the lower respiratory system. Previous attempts to develop a vaccine have been unsuccessful due to an inability to present a primary viral protein to the necessary immune system cells. Known as the F protein, it is how the virus enters human cells and also encourages cells to stick together, making the virus harder to get rid of. So instead of using a weakened, dead, or fragmented virus, these scientists opted to use nanoparticles, particularly extremely small golden nanorods that were similar in shape to the virus itself. They were then able to bind the F protein to these particles in order to stimulate an immune response. To test this nanotech vaccine, the particles were mixed into a test tube with dendritic cells, which are essentially the coordinators of the immune system and give things like T cells their marching orders. Compared to just the protein alone and uncoated particles, the protein-coated nanoparticles elicted the strongest immune response from the dendritic cells. This was measured using T-cell proliferation as a metric, and these tests also proved that the golden particles were not toxic. Further experiments will hopefully result in this extremely important vaccine being used in humans. Other diseases may have vaccines developed using similar nanotechnology, as the researchers think this could be applied to essentially any virus or other pathogen. Next is exciting news from the world of biotechnology. Researchers at Northwestern University working with the Harvard Medical School have, for the first time, created a fully functional ribosome outside a cell. Now this is kind of a big deal because synthetic biologists have been trying to do this for some time. Previous attempts to synthesize a ribosome have resulted in poorly functioning structures. To get around these issues, the researchers attempted to replicate natural ribosome formation as close as possible while still being in a test tube. It ended up being a surprisingly simple one-pot reaction, a mixture of DNA that encoded for structural RNA used in ribosomes, essential enzymes, and additional structural ribosome proteins. This allowed all of the necessary reactions to happen simultaneously, like in nature. While the nucleic acids used in this reaction were synthesized by a machine, the researchers had to borrow the enzymes and other proteins from E. coli. Creating isolated ribosomes like this could give researchers a new tool for the study of protein synthesis, including the development of antibiotics that target bacterial ribosomes. For synthetic biology research, this could mean the creation of custom ribosomes that can create proteins not possible in natural systems. They already created one modified ribosome with a point mutation, giving it resilience to a certain antibiotic, meaning this is a big step in the field of protein engineering and synthetic biology as a whole. Our final story is an update from the world of chemistry. A group from the University of Texas and University of Marburg, working with a startup company, have begun developing a new method for water desalination. Right now, the desalination of seawater relies on processes that require a large amount of energy and advanced filters. Not only can these filters easily be contaminated, but the areas most needing desalination often don't have the infrastructure to support the technology. So this group has created a filter-free technology. It's based on a chip with microfluidic channels through it, with a crucial junction in the channel. All at this junction is a small electrode that only requires 3 volts of electricity, which neutralizes some of the chloride ions dissolved in the water. This modifies the electric field within the chip, encouraging other salt ions to go down one path, allowing desalinated water to flow through the other. Now this system is still at an extremely small scale and requires further developments. The main area of development is increasing the percentage of salt filtered. It's currently at 25%, but 99% is needed for potability. However, the group thinks these goals are definitely possible while maintaining the increased efficiency compared to filter-based systems. The overall goal is to create a lower energy desalination technology that could be implemented at multiple scales, from small personal devices to vending machine-sized equipment to serve small communities. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our second story, if you could make a protein with any function, what would it be and why? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.